then I heard him from within he who died for my sins and spoke my name then I saw his face yes I've seen his eternal glory felt his hand when I was a stranger never knew until then what his love truly meant I was lost but now I'm found by his grace by his grace by his grace I've been saved by the grace of my Lord
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to all. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to join with us today, whether you're here in person, joining us online, we appreciate you taking the time to gather together to worship with us. Thank you to those of you who remembered to spring your clocks forward and get here on time. For those of you who didn't, you're not gonna hear this anyway, so forget it. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. So this is our time to gather together. It's a time of fellowship. It's a time to see each other. It's a time to worship together collectively. Uh, there are lots of ways in which we can worship, in which we can glorify, magnify our Lord. But this is one of the best. This is one of the best ways to do that, just to gather in community, in family, and fellowship. So a small cluster here this morning, but it's a time for us just to gather hearts. So I invite all of you to join with us as we worship together, that we kind of set everything else aside, bring our hearts into... Uh, it's kind of into a realization that this is the moments that we connect with our Lord together. And so let's, let's do that. Let's stand together as we worship and invite him to open up the heavens for us. Here we go. There's a bunch of good things going on in the life of the church these days. Here are some highlights for this week. Do you read our daily red devotionals? The March, April, June editions are available on the table in the foyer. Feel free to pick one up on your way by. On the same table, you'll find you'll also find a yay letter, uh, yay God letter, submitted by Jason DeVries about some really good things going on that God was doing in the midst of the protests in Ottawa. Check it out. Are you a prayer warrior? We're looking for a, a new prayer point person in our church. This is, this is the person who receives a connection point between the National Prayer Ministry and our local congregation. Please contact the office at suefmc at sean.ca for more details. As you may know, we're in the midst of the Lent season. If you haven't already, you're encouraged to be praying and, fa and asking the Lord how he would have you fast during this period leading up to Good Friday. We've got a new Lent opportunity you're invited to connect with this year. We're joining the Free Methodist Church pastors, Jason Tripp and Adam Klein for weekly Movies for Lent Zoom meetups. They're happening every Wednesday at 8 p.m. We'll discuss Lenten themes in light of a different movie each week. Last week, we watched the Iranian movie, A Hero, and had a deep discussion on the theme of temptation. 
This Wednesday, we'll discuss the theme of transfiguration. This week's movie is an animated one called Kubo. For more information on the upcoming movies and themes, check out your this week's newsletter in your email. Also, just a reminder that there are two traditional Lent devotions available that have been sent by your email. First, Tier Fund's 2022 Lent devotion called One, focused uh, on our being one with God, one with others, and one with creation. And the FMCIC's Lent devotional for the National Prayer and Fasting Initiative. You're invited to select one of these resources to help you guide through the Lenten season of prayer and reflection. This year's Sissity meeting on National our annual business meeting is scheduled for Sunday, March 27th, just two weeks from now. It'll, it will take place in a after church. This is a time when we report and celebrate what has been accomplished. Cast for vision of for the future. Elect the official board communities receive the financial statement and approve a budget for the coming year. Come out and be part of, part of this important process for our church community. Finally, Son Son today will be a, a she will share a reminder about the upcoming special sin you cast. Even event the work has the work as really worship retreat it is coming up Friday March 18th here's Sonny Sonny's today let me know if you okay great yeah, so um, we have just one more week until the Work is Worship Retreat. Um, if you haven't signed up, there are flyers out in the entranceway there that you can um, go to the link, sign up online, and uh, we will we look forward to seeing all of you. Um, if there's anybody that you know has would like to sorry would like to participate but is unable to for some reason, just get a hold of me and we can see if there's maybe an accommodation that can be made. Um, yeah, so please take the opportunity and we look forward to doing more events in the future as well. Thank you. Your work matters and it creates more than a paycheck. God has placed you in your position for your personal growth, to benefit your coworkers, and to help society flourish. Your 9 to 5 is part of God's great plan to redeem the world. Join thousands of Christians from hundreds of industries for a one-night live stream event featuring John Acuff, Carrie Newhoff, and Nona Jones that will help you connect your faith to your work. Discover God's vision for your career at the Work as Worship Retreat. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. I'm also looking forward to that work as worship retreat, so come on out. I promise to be concise and precise, um, not to bore you this morning. Um, as you know, I just um, I got the, the, the position as the uh, Youth and Family Ministries Coordinator, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person or online on Zoom to get to know me, and I really want to get to know you guys. So. Um, my availability is Sunday after church, of course. Um, optional Mondays, um, Tuesdays, yes. Wednesday, I'm here by myself. Um, Thursday and Friday. So please reach out, um, whichever forum you like, and I will accommodate. So hope to see. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. So let's get to, let's get together. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take that mic there. I will also be concise. Um, Laura, what a great job doing announcements. Eh? What an active fellow. She is, I think her mom gave her all the hard ones too. Do you know she had all the hard words? 
That, she did really awesome. But anyway, I'm here to let everyone know um, that Alpha is starting again um, on March the 24th. It's going to be online again. And once again, we're doing it in conjunction with St. Veronica's Church and Christ Church. So this is an amazing opportunity for you to um, come alongside someone and uh, help them uh, learn about Jesus. Um, it's online, so there's, there's not a lot that you have to put in. It's all organized. It starts at 7 o'clock promptly and ends at uh, 8.30 promptly. So uh, start thinking about it. Start praying about it. Um, and uh, it'd be awesome if, uh, if you came out and you invited someone along with you. All right. Thank you, Laureen. Okay, well, we have um, kind of something, a few special things this morning, but one of them is that we have a new member uh, <laughs> joining our congregation. Actually, she's been part of our congregation for a long time. But uh, in case you don't know, um, membership, sometimes also known as partnership, is, is a way of kind of investing in your church, showing that you are in partnership with your church. It also gives you the ability to, like, vote and have a, a, a greater involvement in some of the decision-making in your church, in your church family. So we're actually going to be holding a membership class in the next couple of months, date to be uh, announced shortly. Um, but we did do one expedited membership, and so I'd like to invite Barbie Blair to come and join me here. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and Barbie, you can just take that microphone there. So... The, the way that we do this is Barbie and I actually went over a number of the key things within our Free Methodist Church in Canada, doctrines and beliefs and our approach to things. And so I'm just going to ask, we've already gone over all this, but I'm just going to ask Barbie some of these questions. And she's in the presence of all of us saying, yeah, I agree to these things. I'm, I'm on the same page. Okay? Okay, so here's, here's the formal invitation starting part. Friends, you've been baptized into the life of Jesus Christ and are now part of the family of God. This morning you were indicating your desire to become a partner or member of this congregation of the Free Methodist Church, and we're glad that God's mercy has brought you to this point in your journey. We're joining our prayers with yours as you take this step. That's for you, Barbie. Okay, so here is the first question. Do you have the assurance that God has forgiven your sins through faith in Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. Good. Do you believe the Bible is God's written word, uniquely inspired by the Holy Spirit, and do you accept its authority? for what you must believe and how you must live. Yes, I do. Okay. Do you intend by God's grace to be like Jesus in heart and life, to be fully open to the cleansing and empowering activity of the Holy Spirit, and to be guided by the scriptures and by the nurture and fellowship of this faith community? By the grace of God, yeah. <laughs> yeah amen. Yep, let it be so. And will you accept and endeavor to live in harmony with the foundational principles of the Free Methodist Church, including the Articles of Religion, the Membership Covenant, and the goals for Christian conduct, and be guided by the leadership structures of the Free Methodist Church. Yes. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, will you partner with your faith community and the Free Methodist movement as we actively participate in the mission of God in this world, and will you joyfully join us in giving sacrificially of your time, talents, and resources to help carry out that mission? Yes. I think you've already shown that <laughs> to us. Okay, and lastly, um, we do, we welcome you into our faith community and the wider Free Methodist Church, May the experience of partnership in this body not only enrich your life and the life of our church, but also advance God's desires for our community and for the world. Amen? Thank you. Amen. So let it be so. I offer you this uh, certificate of membership. If we can all celebrate with Barbie right now. And I want to take a... If I can just... Barbie, if I can just take two seconds to pray with you. I mean, I know you've been part of our... You guys have been part of our congregation for a long time, but we really value that you're taking this step and of partnership. So, Lord, thank you for your presence in Barbie and in the Blair family's life. And uh, we just welcome her into this role, into this purpose. Thank you for how you've been leading and guiding her. And we just um, believe that you will continue to empower, lead, and guide her by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks a lot, Barbie. Okay, we have one more uh, special thing this morning, but I think the, the Down family, I see some of you, where are the older Downs? There they are. Okay, great. Good news. Okay, get in here, Liz and Phoebe. <laughs> so we've been, uh, we, as many of you know, I think most of you know, uh, Liz, Pastor Liz, previously 
uh, Kidman, Pastor Liz, has transitioned from the Kidman position that she was serving in for many, 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 many years. What was it, umpteen? Umpteen, umpteen yeah, to be precise, umpteen years. Um, and we've uh, been putting together, we've been working to put together just a way of appreciating and celebrating Liz and all of her contributions in that area as she transitions into a new area of ministry. Um, most likely it's, it's looking like it's going to be a type of intercessory, a uh, new kind of ministry actually that we haven't formally had per se, um, but an intercessory pastor. It's a little bit more behind the scenes but also very, very important. We can talk more about that another time. But anyway, I want you all to uh, join us as we celebrate and appreciate Liz with this video. could have had a rapper on our worship team. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't want to, you know. Hi, Liz. Um, this is Carol. I am not very creative with doing jogs or jigs or songs or anything. You really wouldn't want to hear me sing. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you how much I've appreciated you over the years and great, great, great watching you grow and go from somebody who didn't like to be in front of the microphone to relatively comfortable. Um, I don't know what you're going to do with all that creativity now, although your kids are really going to benefit for sure. We're going to really miss you um, being up front, um, love hearing your laugh. Um, Anyway, just want to tell you thanks for being who you are and who you're becoming. Really appreciate you. Lots of love. Lots of prayers go with you as you step into this next part of your life journey. And um, hopefully we'll keep on doing it together. Take care, my friend. Bye. Thank you, Liz. We love you. You're the best. Thanks for everything. Solo. You've been Rick Roll. Oh my goodness. 
Well, I hope you know how much we appreciate you, Liz. <laughs> and uh, just so you know, and so the congregation knows, there were some donations as well that were made just like in the midst of all this. And you can go to Ellen after the service and she'll, <laughs> she'll get those to you. So I, we've prayed for you before, but I do want to take a second just to pray for you again in the midst of this, if I can. Is that all right? You can just stay there, though. It's all right. So Father, thanks a lot for our friend Liz and for this transition and the way that you're leading. And she was awesome in Kid Men. And now she's finding, <laughs> riding on a Schwinn, finding the Jesus thing that's new, that she's been hearing for years and that we've also been hearing. And so we're just supporting her in that in, in our hearts. And I know that she's also interceding for us in the midst of all of this. So we're just welcoming that guiding, that presence of your spirit to continue to show us the new thing that you're doing and to help us to encourage and build each other up in, in this transition process and in the new things that you're doing. We trust you, and we know that this is good. We've been seeing your hand at work, and we're really thankful for the steps of faith and how we're seeing the fruit of it already. Let there be more, more and more and more in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay, I think it's time for our call to worship, and then we'll jump back into music. The call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 27, and I'm reading from the NIV version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice my shout with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful and to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not your turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I re remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Let's stand together as we continue to worship. Two, three, four.
the troubles, strife, risks, and threats going on around us, we could rightly think that uh, we can be concerned and fearful of some things, and that's legitimate, that's for sure. But as we heard in our call to worship this morning, and as this song reminds us, we don't have to be engulfed in a spirit of fear. That is, that we've been delivered from a spirit of fear, that we don't have to be slaves to fear. That's what this song reminds us, that even in the midst of these kinds of things, we can have an indwelling, constant uh, presence of God within us that engulfs us and indwells us with his presence, his goodness, that, that casts out all fear. So we don't have to live in a spirit of fear. So as we sing this song, let's praise him for that. Here we go. You unravel me with a melody and you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone Let's do that again you unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am no so thankful for that privilege that you've invited us into your presence. 
you as our Savior invites us to come into you, to be a part of you, and you can cast out all fear. Help us to remember those things as we face the things that ultimately will come along and undoubtedly will cause strife and troubles. Lord, we just cast our fears on you. there for us. There is one that we can always trust in every moment, in every situation, even when we drop stuff. (laughs) We can still trust you. You are still there. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm praying that, um, that as we're here and as we're just in your presence, in that place of worship, that you would speak to us and, and even uh, through these interviews that we're going to be hearing this morning, that you would continue to speak to us, that your spirit would continue to speak to our hearts and 
bring revelation, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Um, keep showing us the creativity that you placed inside of each of us. And I pray that there'd be an activation that would come from this, that would spark something inside of us from what you've placed there to, to come alive in an even fuller way this morning. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I am going to be very brief this morning in terms of my actual talking. I'm probably not even going to teach or preach really much at all. But I do want to share a little, um, a little short story with you. Uh, uh, actually, I'll, I'll just remind you of the context. So if you were tuned in last week, you'll know that we did a part one of this section of our series called Toward a Creative Community. But we had such great content from, and so much good content from last week that we ended up having to make it into two weeks because it's just really good stuff. And even then, we still had to take out a whole bunch of stuff. So we're actually going to be posting, there's two interviews this morning, and we're going to be posting both of them in their full uh, version on the YouTube channel later in case you want to like hear the whole interview. But these are the, the trimmed down uh, versions of the interviews. But I, I wanted to, um, so this is the focus on theater, film, and story that area of creativity, we're going to shortly be moving into things like business and technology and, and things like that down the road. Um, but for now, this is our last week in the theater, film, and story. So I wanted to share just a quick story with you guys um, that kind of caught my attention, and I think it resonates with some of what the interviewers brought up or going to bring up this morning. When I was uh, going to school, uh, going, doing grad school, I had a couple of really interesting experiences, and one of them was um, early on, like within the first year or so of my time at school, uh, this, this uh, lady was praying for me, and she saw uh, this picture, this impression that I would be, she said, I, you're going to be somehow praying for or ministering to the entertainment industry. And I was like, huh? <laughs> That's kind of out of the blue, like it, you know, I had no context for that, didn't really know anybody in the entertainment industry. I was living in Azusa, California. That's 20 minutes outside of, it's not like I was living in Hollywood or something like that. It's like a suburb that's like 20 minutes outside of LA, right? And, um, and then three and a half years went by. Try to picture yourself in that. Somebody prays for you, you're going to be doing something, blah, 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 blah. Three and a half years went by. No inkling of anything to do with the entertainment industry at all. I'm just doing school, doing my thing, right? And then our, the pastor at the Free Methodist Church that I was part of, he uh, got this impression there was this little Free Methodist Church, really small church that was struggling, and he, said, he got a bunch of us who were like tracking with ordination for the Free Methodist Church, got a bunch of us together and said, you know what, this, this little church that's struggling in, further into L.A., and uh, I want us to pray and fast. I wonder if there's any of us that might be called to, to go and minister there. And so we prayed and fasted for, I don't know, a little while, a week or something like that. And then, uh, and myself and one other guy got this impression. I think we're supposed to help out with that little church. Again, this little church is just in, it's kind of on the edge of Los Angeles. It's not in Hollywood or anything fancy. It's just a little random place. A little tiny church had like 20 people going to it or something like that. Um, and I didn't actually know where exactly it was. I just went there, found an apartment with my friend from the church, and we were going to minister together. And uh, I learned a few months in that I had, I had moved into the neighborhood of another ministry um, called Expression 58 that was actively doing ministry to the entertainment industry. And I ended up getting invited to go to a couple of services that were there. And... Uh, from then on, I started meeting all these people that are like actors and cinematographers and film people and photographers and all that kind of stuff, musicians. I even, I even it was really funny to me. I, did, I had no idea where I was, but I ended up learning that, um, that my favorite worship band, uh, they, one of the band members owned a house 30 seconds from my apartment. I didn't even know what state they were in. Like, I didn't, I didn't know where they were, but I moved 30 seconds away from them. And <laughs> I can't go into all the details for time's sake, but like all these weird, interesting connections. One of, one of my good friends um, now, he was actually a touring, uh, a touring musician with one of my other favorite worship bands. And I just happened to meet him because I happened to follow God to a little church that was struggling. And 
had no clue what I was doing, but just was trying to follow what the Spirit was saying. It, uh, it's been amazing to me the way that God can move in our lives when all we do is we just simply say, God, just lead. Just take me where you want to go. Even if I don't understand it, just take me where you want, where you want me to go. It's that uh, Psalm, what is it, Psalm 37, verse 4. I'm not going to be putting scriptures up on the slides today, but it's that, right, commit your way to the Lord. He'll make your path straight. He'll give you the desires of your heart, those kinds of things, right? And even the things that we don't even fully know that we desire in our heart. We just offer ourselves to him, trust in him, commit to him, and he does the leading in ways that we don't even see. It may be that you go three and a half years or more not seeing the fruit of what you think God said, and then things start to come together. It's amazing to me. Anyway, I wanted to bring that up just because some of the, the people, the two people that I'm interviewing this morning, both are involved in the theater and film and that kind of thing. And the first one is my friend Kevin. Kevin is a cinematographer, and he, he's from the LA area, and he has got to do a lot of uh, really fun film projects, documentaries, and things like that. So here we go. Let's, let's hear from the interview with Kevin. Hi, everybody. Uh, I, I want to introduce to you my friend Kevin Smarichnik. And Kevin and I and his wife Elizabeth, I have gotten to, got to meet Kevin when I was living back in L.A. Kevin is a multi-talented, artistic, creative, awesome person. Some of his areas of emphasis have been cinematography and video editing, particularly for documentaries and the like. Is that about right, Kevin? Did I get that? Uh, yeah, that's about right. Done a, a lot of different jobs in the industry. I forgot to mention, too, I'm a licensed drone pilot, so do drone yeah. work as well. So a lot of different hats. But, I think uh, I saw some of your drone work in one of the documentaries. I was watching a trailer for it. It was really good. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to jump right into the questions. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where creativity started for you? I remember from a very young age, that I wanted to know how things work so much so that I, it really bothered my parents because I would take everything apart. One day the VCR stops working. And uh, of course, you know, my dad's like, oh, just throw it in the trash. We're done with it. I'm like, right. well, we'll see about that. And so I proceeded to take the whole thing apart. They, they got a little bit upset, but the good news is it didn't work anyway. So <laughs> that was when I, I, I noticed that the way my mind works was different from most people. Most people aren't as interested as to how things work that became a passion of mine to understand how things work how things are made and how things are done mm. one of the fascinating things is you know god as creator yeah. that that's an aspect of him that desire that curiosity it's such a passion that it can only come from god mm -hmm. and when you meet other people who have that strong sense of why does this work you wonder yeah. if that is the seed that God puts in people's hearts in order to go and pursue their passion. And for me, it was how do things work? And then, you know, my love of film and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And then it became, well, how do I do this? How do I create this? How do I tell a story? How do I be a part of it? You know, that's just been my journey since day one. You know, films, cartoons, video games. Like, what are the modern fables of today? Mm -hmm. What are the stories that we pass on? And whereas my generation and younger, I doubt that many parents are going, this is the book that changed my life. Here you go. It's usually right. like, here's the movie that changed my life. Right. Or yeah. here's a video game that I love playing as a kid. That's what we pass on. Yeah. I guess it's really cool how you're, you're like, you recognize sort of what it was inside mm -hmm. that, that led you into that, that passion. Right. And I think it's important for us to be able to identify the different types of creativity that God has placed in each of us because some will have that that leaning toward oh yeah you know what I never really thought about that I'm really interested in how things work but another person will have a different aspect a different angle of that creativity and that might lead them into a different form of creativity right a different expression of it and those can all be Absolutely. things that have come from how God has created us I, th I think that's th that also plays right into God's creativity too because mm -hmm. two people might have the same passion but the way that it manifests is completely different. 
Yeah. And I mean, sure. they might even have the same passion, the same subject, the same look, the same type, but the way that they put it forward, the way they yeah. experience it, the way they talk about it, it's, it's always going to be completely different. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the fascinating things. God is an infinite God. So his creativity is infinite. Yeah. Infinitely varied and yeah. Diverse. Yeah. That's cool. It's fascinating. It's cool. How have you experienced God's creativity through your work, either in general, or even like, um, if there's a specific way that you experience God leading you in the midst mm -hmm. of your creativity. A lot of the times when I'm working, you'll get into this zone and things will just begin to flow. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, you look back and you think that's God. Yeah. That, that's that got to be it. Working in film, working in media, you see that it's a miracle that anything gets made. Right. There's so many moving parts. There's so many things that can happen. Like you hear about it behind the scenes in some films where the actors might just say, well, I'm going to just take the day off. And the crew's just waiting and they're like... They left their phone here. We can't get a hold of them. It's out on the beach. So they jumped in a dune buggy and they're gone. <laughs> what, what are you, you going to do? What, what's the production going to do? They just have to sit and wait. That's the main actors. They're not going to recast them. Or directors that just say, I want it my way. I don't care what the production wants. Hmm. And the production says, okay, we're done. Being in Hollywood, being in LA, you hmm. hear so many of the stories of believers being on horror film sets. Mm -hmm. and talking to the people, trying to be that light. I might not agree with the movie, but I do agree with the humanity within that. Mm -hmm. And sure. I think that's, a, that's another way God speaks to me. You'll just get those tremendous blocks, whether it's on an edit, on a production. And recently, we uh, I've been working off and on on a project for over 11 years, and it's a documentary mm. about a couple that survived uh, Auschwitz in World wow. War II. And wow. I'm part of kind of like editing and VFX and, and that side, but I also help with the storyline a little mm -hmm. bit. One of the fascinating things for the longest time, we could not figure out the name of this documentary. We just couldn't mm -hmm. figure it out. Mm -hmm. And it's been, you know, what, four years and we, we couldn't figure out a name. We, we just call it the documentary project. And yeah. just recently we sat down, we talked about it and we came up with a name and it, it just so fit, but every, all these other pieces had to be in place first right. for that to happen mm -hmm. because we had to go down all these avenues of, okay, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't mm -hmm. work. We had to close all the doors before the right path opened up. Right. Anyone who has a relationship with God, it, it's never how you want it to be. It's how he <laughs> yeah. wants it to be. Yeah, right. And and he just, he, he'll he lead you and he'll guide you. And a lot of the times you get a lot of doors slammed in your faces and mm -hmm. you're like, God, why, why didn't you just point me to the right direction? Yeah, and right. God, it's like the process. Mm-hmm. He's got in the process, that's for sure. We have to get to that place where it's like, all right, this isn't comfortable, but that's okay. That's generally where God shines. Mm -hmm. Not when we have all our ducks in a row, not when we have everything lined up, actors, producers, yeah. you know, directors, not when we have that. It's when we don't have those things lined up. That yeah. God steps in, shows up, usually midnight, 11th hour kind of deal <laughs> where it feels like it's it's past 11th hour. It's like one in the morning, two in the morning. Yeah, right. And God that's shows up and it's like, well, this is due, this is due, this is due, and yeah. nothing's happening. And you yeah. wait a couple hours and it's like, oh, kaboom. Yeah, dude. Kaboom. Yeah. It, it all works. Yeah. Yeah. That's so like yeah. um, within understanding God's creativity and like even thinking in, I mean, in lots of areas, but definitely in terms of our, our church process, there's been a whole journey and there's been things that haven't worked. And there's probably going to be things that also won't work along the way. But I keep having this like, was it Edison that did the light bulb? I yes, I always have trouble remembering his name for some reason. Thomas Edison, right? Thomas Edison. And, yeah, and I remember right. hearing. I remember hearing about how he had like tried so many times to actually create a, a functioning light bulb, and he went through. I don't know. I don't remember the exact number. It was like somewhere in the hundreds of different attempts. Um, I think it was in the thousands. Was it in the thousands? Okay. I feel and, like it was around ten thousand or something. Oh my like goodness! That. And and he had been he had been asked, didn't you get discouraged by all these failures? Failures, mm -hmm. right? I'm, obviously, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like, "Well, no. Every time I had a failure, I actually went, oh great, now I know another part that doesn't work, so I can try something else, right?" There's going to be things that don't work in the creative process at times, but mm -hmm. if we look at it the right way, we can actually see 
God's hand in the whole thing. And that it's actually part of sensory. I think, uh, said one time fail is first attempt in learning F A I L first attempt in learning first attempt in learning. I like that. That's helpful. I like that a lot. Yeah. I think if we keep that perspective, it can really keep us moving forward, you know, and trusting that Absolutely. God is still at work, even if we don't see, we don't, we see some failure along the way. I think the hardest part, the first step to, you know, being creative is just in general, it's getting past failure. Mm -hmm. It's getting past the stigma of failure. You know, if, yeah. if you think back to like some very big inventions, most of them were considered failures yeah. by the inventor. One that comes to mind is super glue. Hmm. That came from a chemist trying to create optics for uh, sniper rifles or, you know, different chemical makeup of the glass pieces. Really? Huh. Yeah. And he came up with this chemical, but unfortunately it just sticks to everything. That's what the notes said. Hmm. And then in the Vietnam war, they, right before the war, they, they brought that back up because in it, they mentioned that it sticks almost permanently with skin. Wow. So with a little bit of tinkering, they turned it into super glue and liquid stitches. Wow. So that failure back in late forties, early fifties, it, it goes to show you that you never know what you've created. Yeah. Silly buddy is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was meant to be rubber for tires, but it just, when the guy said, well, this can't be used for tires. So he put it into a, a ball, threw yeah. it over his shoulder and it started bouncing around. Yeah. And now we have silly buddy. Wow. So, you you know, never know when you get, when you get creative with God, what you're going to create, it might be different than even you expected, but it might still be something really meaningful. Right. Right. That's I don't know. Cool. Have you ever heard of Bob Ross? I sure have. Oh, <laughs> we okay. actually had one of our one of our uh, ministry leaders. One of their kids actually wore a Bob Ross uh, hair hair piece for a special event. I can't remember what it was now, but yeah. I'm so happy to hear that kids are, are know who Bob Ross is because that was so much a part of my childhood and the mindset of happy accidents. Yeah, it's such a great mindset to have too, and mm -hmm. the whole character of Bob Ross is just incredible it really ultimately lands on him it's not all on us even if we make mistakes god can make good on the mistakes god That's can good. turn all things around and if we keep that in mind and keep the emphasis on god to repurpose something right then there's not as much like pressure on us to like make it happen it doesn't become all about the flesh and our ability but more about god's ability in us even in our weakness he's strong god will never look at you and think of you as a failure because then we're saying that God couldn't have foreseen what you would have done and, and didn't have a contingency plan like, oh, no, I didn't foresee the spirit of stupid coming on this person. So <laughs> you're on your own. God's not like that. And God doesn't create failures. Come he, on. Creates, he creates his people. He creates something fearfully and wonderfully made, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, God. If you were, were going to just think about your own kind of perspective on creativity and your own experience, what encouragement mm -hmm. would you give to someone who's like trying to figure out how to express their creativity with God? The best advice I could give you, give any person who's like, I know I think differently than most people, hmm. but I don't know what to do with that. I would say invite God and he will take you down avenues you never thought of. I remember speaking with uh, a friend of mine and she had always struggled with math. Hmm. Somehow she got put into a place as an accountant and she hmm. just said, you know what, God, I don't know what to do. And God said, turn the paper upside down. So she turns it upside down and she said, oh, wow, that's interesting. And he said, now look at those pieces. She loved uh, interior design, decorating and all that stuff. She saw the pieces as furniture now. Huh. So an upside down four is yeah. a chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she would look at those things as furniture. And then all of a sudden it became more enjoyable. And she had yeah. a huge stack of papers that she had to go up and add everything up. And she did very well all of a sudden. Wow. So much so that she was so quick. She was much faster than the other accountants. Huh. And one day the boss comes in and says, well, there were some minor mistakes, but how did you do this so quick? Yeah. And she tried to explain yeah. to the boss what happened. <laughs> And the boss was like, well, whatever works for you, you know, couldn't comprehend it. 
And I feel like that is so God for anybody who's creative. You want to work with your hands. You want to come up with concepts. You want to write stories. You want to, you know, tell ideas. Uh, You know, we were right before this, we were talking about Lord of the Rings. And um, one of the fascinating things is when Tolkien was writing Lord of the Rings, he went to his uh, parish minister, a person in his church that was a pastor or a leader. And he says, well, I've got this story. What do you think about this? So, you know, pastor takes it, reads through it, and is just astonished, keeps reading through it, keeps reading through it. Finally, once, once the pastor's done, he looks at Tolkien and says, you don't really believe you wrote this, do you? And Tolkien said, well, you know, it's almost as if Gandalf was whispering it into my ear the whole time. Mm. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, they all wanted to bring a more God-centered version of, of lore mm-hmm. into, into England right. and into history. Now and now their books are read, you know, far and wide all over the planet. Yeah. But to think that that wasn't their idea, that was God saying, I like, I like your heart. I like where your heart is. Let's do it. Let's create that. So the biggest advice I could give anyone is allow God into every circumstance. Mm. Just say, God, what do you want to do? Yeah. And if you want to read more on these topics, uh, there's two really good books. Hmm. Dorothy Sayers, Mind of the Maker. That's for somebody who's uh, maybe into creative arts, painting, creating, and just kind of like bringing God into the process, going from thought, idea, concept to product, yeah. you know, final, final art form. Yeah. And then there is Bill Johnson's book, Dreaming with God. Mm. And that has a bunch of um, stories of God intervening into people's lives, giving them schematics, giving them ideas. Mm. The Phantom Camera Line was created by a pastor in San Francisco Hmm. who one day God said, you're going to make a camera and it's going to be the rarest camera. And this is back in the early 2000s uh, or maybe even late 90s. And and the pastor was like, God, I don't know how to make this stuff. He's like, you're right, you don't. You're going to get an engineer. You're going to get an electronic engineer. And he's going to have to be able to record backwards in time. Hmm. And the pastor's just sitting there going like, okay. And now we have, you know, years later, he finds that, you know, he sells his first camera once it's finalized, once it's created. I'm sure there's a ton of hoops he had to jump through, Yeah. but he sold his first camera for $400,000 to a university. Wow. Because it could take 10,000 frames a minute, wow. uh, a second, 10,000 frames a second. Yeah, yeah, right. Or something like that, or a couple thousand uh, frames at that time. Yeah. Now they're up to almost 100,000 frames a second. Wow. When when we want people to go into creativity, think big, dream big, Mm -hmm. dream with God, we have to give these stories because it's like, my my gosh, I mean, God, he's in this business. We Mm -hmm. don't talk a lot about it in church. He's in the creative business. That's to empower people because the enemy is also in the creative business. Sure, sure. He wants to take over that venue. He wants to control it. He wants to take anything that God is giving someone, talents, gifting, ideas, creativity. He wants to take that and steer it his direction. Right, yeah. He might not be able to create anything new, but sure, he can rip off something that God created yeah, yeah. And, and, and use it for his own purpose. Creatively. Yeah. So I got in for a myriad of reasons. The first one being it's the most fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to take you, see it as an adventure, don't see it as a destination. And the second is... You'll learn who God is. Mm. You'll learn his nature, his character, how much he loves you, and how much he loves the creative process. Mm. And three, it's it's going to create something that you can be proud of that's going to empower other yeah. people. because it's, it's so evident to us, but we, we, we trivialize it because we don't, we assume that God, God wouldn't give this, this engineer uh, an idea for a vacuum cleaner. I mean, God's supernatural. Why would he care how we clean up dirt? Right. But yet at the same time, God's in everything, He's everywhere. In and yeah. there's, there's some really great stories of this in Bill Johnson's book, Dreaming with God. Getting into creativity, not being afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. I think that will lead you towards the path of living a life that's creative. Take a risk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the creative yeah. one. That's really yeah, good. Awesome.
Kevin, I so appreciate all the input, lots of yeah. inspiration and insight. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be an inspiration to a bunch of people. So thanks a lot I for spending so. some time. Chris, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm really glad to be a part of this. And uh, I, I'm, I'm so glad that I could be, oh, baby screaming in the background. <laughs> uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this. And I, I hope it really touches, uh, you know, some people, whoever hears this, I hope uh, it draws you in closer to the Lord and really blesses you. Mm. And Chris, thanks again for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. And I'm sure it will be a blessing. Thanks a lot. So hi, everybody, again, uh, I am here with our dear friend, Stephanie Maioni. And uh, Stephanie, Stephanie and I have had another one of those really cool interwoven kind of stories in the Lord, like from a number of years ago and various different connection points, even including some connections back in Los Angeles, of all things, which is kind of fun. Um, but really appreciate Stephanie and definitely somebody with a real creative heart and a real uh, heart for the Lord. So I'm really excited to to just chat with Stephanie and um, and see what kind of insights the Lord wants to share with us today. So hey, thanks, Stephanie, for hanging out and spending some time. Hello, my pleasure. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, where, where did creativity start for you? I know that for you, like, there's probably a whole bunch of different areas of creativity, but I know that like film and that kind of realm has been important in the last number of years. So where would you say yeah. that creativity started for you? At a very young age, I was always like artistic and trying to be creative. Uh, my poor parents, they would leave me to babysit and they'd come back and all the furniture would be <laughs> rearranged and <laughs> shifted around. They never knew what they'd be coming home to. I just always loved decorating and I would go to schools and we'd be decorating for a play and I would get to be in charge. We'd have um, dinner theater program mm. and so I would decorate the whole school and have little things in the washrooms and just, it's like, I feel like a heart of hospitality, like cool. wanting people to come in and just feel, you know, embraced by just the whole space Yeah, and know that they're welcome. Is, how have you experienced God's creativity through your work? I went into decorating for weddings. Uh, I had gotten, uh, well, not paid the what I was at all of what I was supposed to get paid and I was going out west to uh meet a dear friend's brand new baby and I really wanted to see my family out there and so I had lost it was thousands of dollars and I was like wow lord I was like I was really counting on that money to mm. go on this trip and and uh I'm just thanking you right now in advance for providing me with the means to go and yeah. however it takes, and I want to meet this baby and kiss his little face when he still <laughs> has that fresh little baby smell. So right. however you're yeah. doing it, thank you. I love you. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, looking forward to this trip. Mm. So all of a sudden, my phone just started ringing off the hook to do these little uh, jobs. And I would get paid to clear something out and then get blessed with beautiful pieces of furniture. I was like, you're paying me to clear this out and giving me this. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Sure enough, he provided, of course, and I was driving out west with our daughter. We got to Calgary at about 5.30 a.m. So I told him about how that had gone with the wedding. He was like, Auntie, you need, really need to go after those people and get that money. Mm. And I said, uh, no, Christian, actually, uh, it's not my job to chase after money. It's money's job to chase me down. And <laughs> right. So I'm like, if people have that heart, I just am a very strange individual. <laughs> I'm like, well, if that's the way you want to be, hmm. God bless you. Hmm. And I'm trusting God to pay me back all of that. And yeah. with interest, like he promises. Yeah, <laughs> so, you mentioned um, something about creating this space. Did you say, did you use the language of making the space like hug? Yeah. Earlier this morning, I was talking to my dad and he actually just talked about how a space should hug you. He literally said that. So it's so funny. The same, same day. So I think that's a, that's a gift, right? If you can, if, if the Lord can help you to make a space be a, like a hug, that is a, yeah. it's a blessing, right? 
<laughs> that is super sweet about the space should hike you. Yeah, isn't that cool? Whether you yeah. have, are there any stories that come to mind of when God led you into a creative process? Or has it been more mostly kind of walking with him moment by moment? I went to this worship conference and on paper, it was like exactly my heart. Hmm. And so I'm like, well, I'm going. And I walked in and I saw this beautiful painting of like a heart mm -hmm. and it wasn't a little Valentine's day heart. It mm -hmm. was like the structure of an actual. Yeah. Like an anatomical heart. Correct. Yeah. Heart. Yeah. And it just like, mm -hmm. was like a magnetic force just mm -hmm. pulled mm -hmm. me right over to it. And I was just like looking at it and just, wow, I'm looking at a picture of a heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this? And then later there was a picture, a uh, painting of a, uh, a young Asian girl mm. and it was just beautiful and it pulled me to it as well. And I thought, wow, I should look at the names of the artists and see, you know, maybe at some point they'll cross my path. And I saw the name and I thought it was a guy's name because it ended with an O. About an hour later, we're walking out and my eyes locked with this woman's eyes and she just came walking right up to me and she was like, what's your name? She was like, you're supposed to paint. We're supposed to paint together. You're painting with me today. Mm. And it turned out she was painting up on the stage. And I, so I said, um, no, I will not go up there and paint, but <laughs> I'll paint something down here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so she set me up with a little painting station. Mm-hmm. And, but it turned out when she told me her name, she was the artist. Oh. Of both, both of the paintings when I went to check had the same name. Yeah. And I thought that's wild. It's like different styles. Yeah. And this woman that we locked eyes and went to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, it was her. Wow. And also on the worship team, um, I could hear feel the heart of one of the, I don't, I think it was the bass guitar player, but he was playing some kind of a guitar. Forgive me, Chris. I don't okay. know. He's <laughs> no, I will leave that to you. <laughs> and, uh, That's my sphere of influence. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, wow, that guy's heart is so beautiful. Like mm -hmm. he's not up there trying to perform or get yeah. attention for himself. He is just worshiping the Lord worshiping and in God. love with god hmm. and i thought wow well it turns out that's her husband oh wow yeah and so oh. it it was wild and so god's really connected us yeah over the years we love each other so here it ends up we both are in film she's also she's a scenic painter which i do at times as well mm -hmm. yeah just he led me pulled my heart to go there hmm. pulled me to each of her paintings and then drew us together. Oh. The footsteps of his righteous children yeah. are ordered of the Lord. Yeah, And right. it's like keeping our eyes open and our hearts open hmm. and seeing what he like, you know, I want to see what he has for me in a day. Yeah. So yeah, many, 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 many situations like that for mm. sure. That's that heart posture thing, right? It's like, we place we just constantly come back to him with that heart posture of lord i just want to i want to go where you want me to go and i want to step mm -hmm. into what you want me to step into and all that kind of thing and, and he orders yeah. our steps right well, the last, really thing, uh, last thing i wanted to ask you is just um i guess for the encouragement of anyone that might be listening um what encouragement would you give to someone who's trying to figure out how to express their creativity with god whether it's in this realm or another realm well, I would say go for it. Like nobody knows how to do anything until you try. Mm -hmm. I always say if people think, oh, I wish I could sew. Well, then try it. Yeah. I'm like, even the guy that built the sewing machine had never, ever used a sewing machine before. Hmm. So until he built it and then tried it. what We don't even know what's on the inside of us. Yeah. And if we're nervous, which everybody gets nervous, mm -hmm. and I prefer to try to learn things on my own, God mm -hmm. always seems to make me have to do these things. <laughs> have to go paint with the people right there. <laughs> right. 
while cameras are rolling and they're like, yeah. painter, come in. Uh, when I had said, we should just paint to that corner just to be safe. And they're like, no, no, stop right here. Don't paint an inch further. <laughs> then they go to camera. Painters, get in here. And then two of us up on <laughs> passing the batons and rolling the it's like, oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> so it's like, God wants us to be flexible, mm -hmm. to be cheerful mm -hmm. and open-hearted and joyful, really, mm -hmm. in all circumstances. And it's like learning, always being willing to learn, because what do we know? I, the way that the things that I know now, when I, I used to think I knew everything <laughs> about God when I was younger. Yeah. And then you wow. learn. <laughs> the more I learn, the more I realize ah, I know nothing. Yeah. God is far too big for me. Mm. But uh, to but I want to continue learning and growing, and it's limitless. Yeah, like His wisdom. And actually, when I first like got really on fire for the Lord and got filled with the Holy Spirit, I didn't even care about art anymore. I didn't want to decorate anymore. I didn't want to do any of that stuff anymore. I was like, I'm done. All I care about is soul, soul, soul. Like, Lord, yeah. I want souls. Mm -hmm. And sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Mm. And uh, I went to just spend some time with the Lord and I cracked open the Bible to um, Exodus. And it says, then Moses said to the Israelites, see, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Ur Uri, <laughs> I don't know, Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of God, hmm. with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, <laughs> make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic craftsmanship. And he has given both him and Noah Holiab, son of uh, um, yeah. something, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. Hmm. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as, as craftsmen, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, and weavers, all of them master craftsmen and designers. Wow. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing this sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Wow. Almost sounds like the Holy Spirit who cares deeply about souls also cares deeply about the skills and giftings and creativity these placed in people. Well, that cr creates conversations, which yeah. create relationships which mm -hmm. create bridges for people to get awakened to the reality that there's a God who loves them yeah. more than anything mm. in the world. Mm. And so it's, yeah, that's what he gave me. And I was like, meh. All right. <laughs> Okay, fine. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess you know what you're doing. So it's like when he fills his people with his spirit, they're creative artists yeah. in all manner. Like, and there's mm -hmm. there's artistry in accounting. Yeah. There's artistry in everything that we do has an mm -hmm. artistry. So being a, a mother, a homemaker, a father. There's artistry, like some men, the way they mow their lawn. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you are creative. Yeah. <laughs> so Pretty just cool. seeing the beauty in each person and, and then recognizing it in others, like, because we don't need to be competitive. Mm. There's a lot of competition in this, the industry that I work in. Yeah. And like a lot of that back, fighting and backstabbing and mm -hmm. and that's that's part of life mm -hmm. but if we can not take it personally and choose to still love these people asking god to show us how we can be a blessing to them to break mm -hmm. those walls down because there's one guy who wants to cause division between us 
and cause offense so that we don't have a way to speak into these people's lives. Mm. And why should he get what he get what he wants? Mm -hmm. I want God to have what he wants mm -hmm. and he want it's his will that none should perish. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel very thankful and blessed that I get paid to play really mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. try it out. I'm like, well, I always did want to try this out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thankfully it's been a, a real blessing to me. Cool. And to our family. Yeah. Yeah. God. Well, amen. I really appreciate the time that you spent Stephanie. Uh, I'm inspired and I know others will be, and I appreciate all the encouragement. I hope that everybody that hears this will be able to kind of tap into some of the reality of who God is for us and what he wants to do and, and how he wants to use all the unique creativity that's in each one of us and that we can step out and that and trust him with it. It's really good. Amen. Amen. I love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> <laughs>that is so fun. You guys enjoy that? I really enjoyed those interviews. We love our friend Stephanie and we love our friend Kevin. Yeah, it was really cool to hear from them. They've got some really good, uh, really good wisdom and experience and understanding and insight from just what they've, what they've done, what they've been living, right? How they've been living out their lives in the Lord. Um, I just want to take really two seconds to, well, uh, two seconds has already gone by, but um, <laughs> just a quick moment to just share briefly with you guys, uh, and then we'll uh, spend our, our last moment in a, a last worship song. Um, I love, I love that 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 revelation <laughs> that Stephanie had of like, Lord, I just want souls, and isn't that what we're all supposed to want? And it's like the Lord is saying yes, except sometimes the way we understand that isn't actually what God is saying. And then we look in the scriptures and then he says, well, actually, I created you to do this. <laughs> and that's the connection to souls, right? If you do what I've gifted you to do and, and give yourself fully to me and fully to what you've given me to do, then you will be able to. You don't have to throw it away. You have to actually embrace what I've given you and, and welcome me to lead that. Um, the one passage that was on my heart through all of this is, uh, is Psalm 37. I, and I just want to read like just a couple of verses. Um, yeah, let's, I'll just do, do from verse 1 to like verse 5 or 6 here. Don't fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, <laughs> the lawnmower, <laughs> and wither as the green herb. <laughs> By some really creative lawn mowing guy. <laughs> trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. You see the emphasis in that, right? It's not that God doesn't care about the desires of our heart, but it all starts with commit your way to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. It's like him first, connect here, trust here, and then those desires that he's actually placed will start to come forth and start to come alive because you're like connected to who you're really supposed to be connected to. I love that. I'm inspired by that. Um, I just want to take a moment because I wasn't originally going to do this, but I just felt I kind of prompted. This is all about being connected to the true God through Jesus. All of our creativity, this is not just about what we happen to like to do or what we do on our own. It's not just about that. It's actually first about God, how he's created us, what he's wired us to do so that he can accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish. And if we don't have that relationship with him, we're just operating on our own strength. And yeah, God has placed some things there, but we're not operating out of, out of the fullness of who he is for us. So doesn't, you know, yeah, there's things that he wants to do. So I want to invite uh, those of you who are here, those of you who are online, if there's any of you that, that haven't actually committed to the Lord, haven't actually come into that relationship, 
or, or maybe there's been kind of a barrier and that relationship has been like hindered and bottled up recently, I want us to take a moment to just welcome him and say, yes, Lord. Like, yes, God, I trust you. I trust that without you, I'm, I'm broken, I'm, I'm sinful, I just go my own way, and it doesn't produce the really amazing beauty that you want to create through my life. And so, God, I give myself, and I want to invite you kind of in your hearts, just you can pray this sort of with me. I invite you, Lord, to, to, take, to take my life that you originally gave to me. I'm not holding it for myself. I'm not trying to control it myself. It's yours. You gave it to me, just like the gifts that you placed in me. You know what to do with them. God, glorify your name through my life. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus that he died and he rose again to forgive me and release me from all of the stuff that I am without you so that I can walk in that fullness, that life that is amazing with you. And so that all those things that you place inside me don't have to be squashed and, and put away, but they can actually come to life through my relationship with you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your people. Fill us up, Lord. We offer ourselves to you. We need you more than anything else. We just offer ourselves to you right now. And thank you for filling us. Thank you for your faithfulness because it's your promise and it's what you intend. It's what you've shown us. So we just receive from you today. Thank you, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen? Even accountants are creative. Did you notice they both said that? (laughs) I'm blessed by that. I hope there's a couple accountants out there that are blessed. (laughs) Okay. Um, Dave, would you come up and worship team, come and join us and lead us in the last song. Please stand with us.
so and Sarah and I were just talking about something, an impression that she had got, and I wanted to share this with you uh, just as we close. this story with a few people. When I was living with some roommates, the homeowner, she had renovated the basement, and my friend and I, we rented the, the basement together, so we, yeah, so we um, lived in the house. It was Diana's house. She lived on a really big hill, lots big of uh, property, grass, and um, just as we were talking about, as I was hearing about the lawn mowing, I had remember this story Diana had a lot going on and I said I can help you um, <laughs> I've never rode a lawnmower before I have uh, worked mower, a riding right? lawnmower yeah. before but I'm willing to learn just show me how to do it I can do it and she's like okay great so she shows me how it all works and everything and how to drive it around and sets me off to it she goes inside the house and I'm thinking, this is, this is how I was processing this whole thing at the time. The goal is short grass. <laughs> and I'm helping. So as long as the grass is shorter than it was, I'm helping. Because this is, she doesn't have to be burdened with this anymore. So if I'm going to do this, it's going to take me a couple hours. This is a huge, huge lawn. I might as well listen to music and have fun while I'm doing it. So I get on this lawnmower and I, I start going all over the property. I'm gonna go this way, that way, this way, that way. And I'm just having a blast, just driving around. And again, as long as the goal is shorter grass, I think I'm doing a great job. Oh, those artsy people. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I was a kid or something. I was actually probably like it's somewhere like in my 20s. Ago, yeah. years ago. <laughs> And um, meanwhile, Diana is looking, she's standing up in the window with my other roommate, Katie, looking out the window and just not saying anything. And Katie, they're, they were both in their, I want to say late 50s. What is she doing? <laughs> and she's like, I have no idea. Diana's thinking was, I'm, I'm just not going to ask her to do it again. <laughs> and Katie's like, no, you need to tell her, you know, how you want it done. See, that was the thing I had. I was needing specific instructions how she wanted it done with the beautiful lines going in circles. And that eventually she did tell me. And then I, you know, I did the beautiful circles. I figured out how to do the circles. <laughs> it made sense, saved on some gas too. <laughs> my, my point in sharing this is that I recognize we process things differently. Every person is unique. And, and we'll see things differently. Yeah. What's most important to one person might be different to another person. So I was just thinking that there's, there's, I was feeling that there's people here, all different ages, that feel maybe different, like you process things differently. And I just want to say that's okay. And just to reiterate what they were sharing, to invite God into it. Mm -hmm. Because if numbers are, you know, str are a struggle for you, He'll find a way, your language, to turn them into furniture yep. so that you can excel. Yep. And he will make more, more. your gifts come forth. So don't feel bad when you <laughs> mow a lawn and it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just know that he's going to, he's, you, you are beautiful. And so I just feel like just, I want to pray over every person here. Those that are still trying to find their place and figure out where they shine those that have a sense but maybe you've been fearful and hiding and withdrawing and saying maybe this this isn't possible for me and yet you feel that pull like this is really what you're meant for and those that are like they've stepped out in risk and faith they're there they're they're in that place of using their gifts and talents but they need that breakthrough for the next part to be able to really you know for that next step so I just want to take a moment Father, I thank you for every single person online, in this room, those that will hear this message later. Father, I agree with my brothers and sisters here, young and old. We surrender our gifts and talents to you. 
we invite you to help us to understand our creative language and how you want us to use the things you've placed inside of us. And I speak blessing and removing of fear, intimidation, all of these things that want to hinder, be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you for your voice and clarity and for that breakthrough going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. Thanks, sons. I'm just going to send you guys off with the Lord's blessing. So just receive. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful day.